Hello Gasheads and welcome back to the Rovers Report where in today's video I'm going to be having a little look back to my pre-season league predictions for the EFL League One. Now the normal season has concluded, you know we're in the, the middle of the playoffs at the minute but the full table is there for us to have a look at, to have a look back and see how I did on my predictions. Um, I've already had a little, a little look to be fair and you know there's a couple in there that I'm quite happy with. Uh, there's certainly a couple of howlers in there as well, which I'm sure you'll take great pleasure in pointing out to me. But yeah, we're going to have a little look back at that, see how I did, um, see how some of the teams you know that I predicted to do poorly, see if they ended up doing better than I thought. Um, but yeah, all of that sort of stuff. Um, just because the season's over doesn't mean the content's going to stop. So, you know, this is going to be the first of uh, probably two or three videos coming out this week. And we're going to continue on that going all the way through pre-season, you know, looking at transfers, all that sort of stuff. So if you are new around here, be sure to subscribe. If you enjoy the video, smash it a like. Um, and if you've got any thoughts on this video or any others, as always, be sure to leave your comments down below and I will get back to you. Um, with that being said, let's get straight into the predictions. Right then, let's get straight into it. And we're going to work our way up from the bottom to the top. So coming in at 24th place this season was Forest Green Rovers. Uh, obviously, Bristol Rovers, neighbours from just down the road in Gloucester. Um, and I actually had them predicted as going down. I didn't have them as bottom. had them down at 21st. But, you know, a lot of the predictions that I made pre-season have actually come true. You know, it was a turbulent summer for them. A lot of change with their manager, with their players, you know, bringing in the likes of Charlie Savage halfway through the season. A um, bit of an odd one that. You know, Dale Vince is a strange man, um, and he's brought in Duncan Ferguson. Not quite sure that's a good match, really. Um, you know, and he, there was a bit of an uptick in form from them. You know, they beat Sheffield Wednesday on the telly. Fair play to them, but, you know, it hasn't really worked out. Um, lost a lot of their key players, and ultimately that, that told, didn't it? Um, they'll be playing in League Two once again next season, back where they belong. Um, but, yeah. Overall, for me, that prediction I was pretty happy with. I'm sure a few others probably saw that coming as well. But yeah, I had them down as 21st and they came 24th. Uh, now, moving on to the 23rd place team this season, and that is Accrington Stanley. Um, I did not have them predicted to go down. Uh, I had them at 18th. Um, so, you know, right sort of ballpark, lower down the table. But again, I think most people would have predicted that. Um, my line of reasoning for this was that, you know, with John Coleman and their squad, a bit of now, a bit of know-how, but unfortunately for them, their time was up. You know, they spent many seasons in League One. But, you know, I think a lot of people probably say, you know, they've been punching above their weight for some time now. So, you know, their time has come and they will be playing League Two football next year as well. Um, moving on, at 22nd, we have my first and only bang on prediction, and that is Morecambe Town. Um, you know, similar to Atkinson Stanley, they've been punching above their weight for many years now, and, you know, I said that, I said, a bit too heavily reliant on Cole Stockton, who actually didn't play most of the, you know, the first half of the season, but did come back towards the back end and did score a few goals for them. Um, you know, they've, you know, sign of the financial, you know, times they're in is that they've had to release many of their best players, um, that's recently come out on their retain list. You know, a few of them in there that I think Rovers should definitely be looking at. But yeah, I was pretty happy with that. Morecambe 22nd, and that is exactly where I had them predicted. Um, now, taking up the final relegation spot in League One this year is MK Dons. Um, yeah, I know, bit of a shock, is it? I'm not sure many people would have predicted that. I certainly didn't. But I do have to take a bit of credit here because where quite a few people were sort of putting them, you know, upper echelons of the table. I actually had them down at 14th. And, you know, this is a theme that I'm quite strong about, is if you miss out on playoffs uh, the previous year, the hangover going into the next season usually results in, you know, a, a lesser performance throughout the season. Uh, and that's true, pro proven to be true for Milton Keynes. Um, finishing 21st, you know, I, I appreciate a lot of their best players left, their manager... But still, there's enough quality there to, you know, definitely stay above the relegation zone. And, you know, their fans would be very, very angry at the fact that they almost won the championship last season. And then this season, they've ended up 
getting relegated to League Two. Um, I'm sure the footballing world are pretty happy with that. I, for one, couldn't give a shit. Um, you know, empty stadium, horrible, horrible place to go. So, good riddance to them. Uh, so, yeah, that is the relegation spots. Uh, I predicted two out of the four, which I think ultimately is not too bad. Um, had a bit of a howler with Atkinson Stanley, but, you know, not too bad. So, moving on to 20th place to 15th place. Um, and coming in at 20th uh, and just escaping relegation on the final day of the season was Cambridge United. You know, that was brilliant scenes at the Abbey Stadium. Fair play to them. Um, I had them down as finishing rock bottom. Uh, so, you know, it's not a terrible prediction because, you know, had something else happened on that final day, they would have got relegated. That would have been three out of four for me predictions. But, you know, fair play to them. They stayed up. Um, small club. You know, not, not a huge amount about them. Not a massive fan base. But, you know, credit to them. Uh, they really turned it around in the last sort of seven or eight games of the season and that can only be commended. Um, but, yeah. Four places off for me on them, so in the grand scheme of things, not too bad. Um, but I did not have them down to survive, and they did. Um, and coming in now at 19th place is potentially the biggest howler from me. Uh, I actually had the 19th place team down to finish fourth, and that is Oxford United. So, you know, I hold my hands up on that. That's poor. But to defend myself a little bit... Um, I would say that a lot of people would have probably had them in and around the playoffs. You know, I stuck my neck out a little bit saying that they get fourth. But, you know, the historical evidence would suggest that they'd be in and around that playoff place. Um, and, you know, I thought with a few good additions, they could really push for that, you know, top five of the league. But, you know, they've had a very poor season. Um, annoyingly, they just managed to stay up. So, uh, I guess on the bright side, that would be another easy three points for Rovers at the Kassam next year. Um, but, yeah. Like I said, that's a shocker from me. Predicted them fourth, uh, and they finished 15 places below that. Um, just above Oxford United, we have Port Vale, who finished in 18th. Um, I had them down to finish 16th. So, you know, what I said in my prediction videos pretty much rang true. Is pretty solid team, you know, especially on Daryl Clark, they'll give 100%. Uh, he obviously got sacked towards the end of the season in a sort of strange fashion, wasn't it? It was, you know what I mean, they're sort of you know, four or five games to go in a relegation battle somewhat and they decided to sack their manager. But, you know, it's worked for them. Um, luckily, it didn't backfire. But, uh, yeah, for that prediction, I was only two places off. Um, again, I, you know, most people probably would have predicted that, if not a little bit lower, but I'm happy with that. Um, and then coming in at 17th is my team at Bristol Rovers. Um, a bit disappointed with the season in general, to be honest. You know, uh it's kind of right with this sort of the ballpark figure. I knew we would, you know, we might flirt with the playoffs for a period of time, but never really going to have a sustained challenge at that. Um, you know, in the, in the prediction video, I stated that we look we look good, promising signings of Evo and Connolly coming back. Hasn't really worked out for either of them. Um, and then I also stated we'd get a few scalps along the way, which I think we have in some senses. You know, those midweek draws at Sheffield Wednesday, Friday night at Bolton. Um and I said that the depth of our squad would ultimately cost us. Um, and it has. Um, but yeah, I was a bit more optimistic. Probably should have been a bit more realistic. But four places between my prediction and the actual place we finished. Not so bad. Um, just above us in 16th is our West Country rivals, Cheltenham Town. Um, you know, and they finished above us in third place. And they had a great season. You know, the goals of Alfie May sort of kept them bobbing along. Um, I think they would have been a prediction for many to go down and hold my hands up. They were for me. I had them at 23rd. Um, you know, I stated about Michael Duff leaving them as a potential reason. You know, he's very much the fulcrum of that of that club. But, you know, Wade Elliott has quite capably taken over and, you know, he's done really well. So, well done to Cheltenham Town. My prediction there, you know, I think a lot of people will probably have agreed with me there. Smallish club for League Two, small budget, manager leaves, a few of your players go. You know, I don't think it was a, an outrageous call, but hasn't worked. Um, and they ultimately came 16th. Uh, and then coming in at 15th, we have Burton Albion, who I predicted to come 20th. 
Uh, I actually said in the video that they would start the season poorly, which they did. Uh, you know, Rovers obviously had that 4-1 victory there, 4-1, 4, -1, 4 -0. can't remember, um, but it was a big victory. Um, you know, things looked bleak under Hasselbank, brought in Dino Mamria, uh, and things have turned around. Um, so, well played to them. And yeah, that is 20th to 15th. Didn't really do too well there, to be honest. You know, Port Vale, I pretty much got right, and then all the others are four or five places off. So, yeah, not particularly happy with that. So now let's move on to 14th to 10th place. And yeah, I think I've done a little bit better here, to be honest. Uh, this is probably my most successful region of the table in terms of predictions. Um, and at 14th place, we have Exeter City, who I had down to finish 15th. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people saw them potentially struggling. I actually thought, you know, coming off that back end of League Two season last year, they were really good to watch, really positive football. Um, and I think a lot of people would put off early bells that, None of their, you know, they didn't make any signings. Um, but for me, I, you know, I, I've seen them play a few times in the last couple of years and I've always been impressed. Uh, so, you know, I had them down as a surprise package. And I think in many senses, that's true of the Grecians. So, yeah, I'm happy with that one. Um, moving on, I had Fleetwood Town down at 12th. They finished 13th. So, again, in the right sort of ballpark. And I'm well happy with that because, again, I think a lot of people saw them flirt with relegation the last year. And thought they might do it again, but you know, I saw Scott Brown come in and thought, you know, they'll get a bit of a bounce from him. They made some good acquisitions, you know, Josh Vela coming in, um, you know, back end of the season, they made some very good attacking signings. Um, so yeah, one position off in that, which I think I consider a success, considering some of my other predictions. Uh, speaking of poor predictions, coming at 12th, we have Shrewsbury Town. You know, I stuck my neck out again a bit here and put them at sixth prediction, but, you know, it seems a long way off. But, in, you know, in my opinion, I think, you know, they flirted with the playoffs for a little bit. If they had a bit of a stronger squad, a bit more depth, they might have stuck around there. You know, they were, at the time, they were sort of pushing for that playoff spot. It was only the last couple of months where injuries cost them. Um, so, yeah, it looks a poor prediction, and it probably is, but... There's a couple of reasons behind why I think it's not so bad. Um, this one, the next one, I can't really say anything for. Lincoln City came in at 11th, uh, where I had them at prediction 19th. Um, so, yeah, again, hold my hands up on that. Pretty poor. Um, I wasn't that excited by them. Um, they weren't that exciting this season, but, you know, a strong, strong home form is a good ba base to build off of. Uh, and fair play to them for finishing so high at the table. Um, when probably a lot of people wouldn't have had them up there. So it'd be interesting to see how they perform next year. Uh, and coming in at 10th, we have Charlton Athletic. Um, it's a bit of a weird one. Hear me out on this, though. Uh, I'm happy with my prediction for this because I saw a lot of people's predictions saying they'd be in the playoffs up there. Uh, I had them down to finish 17th. So, you know, even though it's seven, seven positions off where they actually finished, the fact that I saw and thought, you know, this Ghana project isn't going to work, uh, I'm taking a bit of credit for that. So, you know, I'm happy with that. Like I said, probably my, my most successful region of the table. Um, and yeah, let's move on to the rest of the table. Moving on now to, we will go from ninth place all the way up until the top two. So yeah, ninth place is Wickham Wanderers. I had them down at 11th, you know, again, not a bad shout really, to be honest. Uh, I said again about the playoff hangover, which I think is a real thing, to be honest. Uh, I knew they wouldn't you know, be back up there again. Some of the sides that came down uh, and some of the sides that built over the summer are just better than Wickham. Uh, you know, obviously, Gareth Ainsworth, the rat, has left them. Uh, so, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they do next season with Sam Vokes at the helm. Uh, horrible club. Uh, at eighth place was Portsmouth. I had them down at ninth. So, again, pretty decent prediction, but... You know, I think putting Pompey anywhere from 5th to ninth is probably one of the safest bets you're going to have in League One. A decent season, but their fans will be annoyed they haven't managed to make something more of it. Uh, at 7th place, we have Derby County, who just missed out on the playoffs. And uh, I actually had them down to win the league. Um, maybe I was too, you know, drawn in by their big money signings and, you know, the hype that was going around pre-season. But ultimately... It, didn't gel quite as well as they wanted. Um, you know, they spanked Rovers 
at their place and they've obviously got some good players in that team but it just didn't work out for them. Um, yeah, like I said, I got drawn in a little bit, I think. Many others probably did but ultimately I was I was quite far off it. They didn't even make the playoffs. Um, coming in at sixth place and taking up the final playoff spot is Peterborough United. Uh, fair play to them. On the day I record this, uh, I watched them last night absolutely demolish Sheffield Wednesday in the first leg of the playoffs. So it looks like they've booked their place to Wembley. Um, good on them. Uh, I said that JCH's goals would you know, get them into the playoffs. I actually had them down at third place. Um, and at fifth is Bolton Wanderers. Um, and I had them just missing out on the playoffs, which, you know, not to look wise after the event, but I still think that's a good shout. You know, they had a lot of problems in that team. Ian Everett's not a proven manager, but, you know, credit to them. They've made it into the playoffs, um, playing Barnsley today in the first leg. Uh, should be an interesting playoff game. So, well played to them. Um, I was only two positions off, and you know, when it gets around that playoff, it's just sort of a flip of a coin, isn't it? Um, but I had them at fifth, at seventh, sorry, and they finished fifth. Uh, and then Barnsley finished fourth. I had them down at fifth. So again, you know, I know I'm talking about it when it comes to the playoffs. Um, you know, I wasn't too fan of them, you know, potentially finishing in the top two. Um, but yeah, that's where they finished. Finished fourth, I had them down at fifth. Um, and moving on to the team that finished third this year, and that is Sheffield Wednesday, uh, who I actually had down as the team to win the division. Not win the division, sorry, come second. But, you know, unfortunately for them, they finished on 96 points and didn't get automatics, which is uh, heartbreaking, isn't it? But, you know, you would have thought they'd go into the playoffs and win, but like I said, they've lost 4-0 to to Peterborough, so it looks like they will be staying in League One next season. And then finally, we move on to the top two of the division, which is, of course, Ipswich Town and uh, champions Plymouth Argyle. Um, and I hate to say it, but unfortunately, I've had a shocker here for both of them. Uh, start with Ipswich Town, who obviously finished second. Uh, I had them down as eighth. Yeah, so not even in the playoffs. Um, you know, one of the best League One teams that's ever been uh, and I didn't predict them to even make the playoffs that is a howler uh, I can't even really defend myself on that <laughs> just got to hold my hands I think my reasoning was something to do about you know the relegation hangover whatever but I think it's a poor shout um, not sure what I was on to there but to top that with an even worse prediction I had Plymouth Argyle down at 10th uh, yeah so poor so poor and it's embarrassing um, I'm sure I'll get a stick for that in the comments. But yeah, I think I actually said there will be a few teams better than them this season. Uh, yep, again, not a single team better than them this season. So, you know, that's what happens sometimes. You make calls, you stick your neck out and you look like a fucking idiot. Um, there you go. It happens. But yeah, that has been my reaction to my pre-season predictions. A bit disappointed I only managed to get one bang on uh, and it being quite a boring one. But... You know, there's a couple of good ones in there. Uh, overall, pretty subpar from me. Let me know if you did any predictions or let me know what you think of mine. Um, I'll be interested to hear your reactions to that. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, like I said, look out for more new content coming in the next couple of weeks. You know, we're going to have end of season awards, transfer news, pre-season fixtures uh, and anything else you want. Let me know. Um, but yeah, I've really enjoyed taking a look back at that. Uh, if you have as well, give it a like um, and I will see you later.